we're on a monstrous ego trip, and uh, people resent it. You know, they hate us because we're so good. <laughs> Does it bother you at all when you read put downs? Yeah, it does. I wish they wouldn't do it. But freedom of the press and all that, you know. Mm. <laughs> you say with a nasty glint. Um I think maybe it will change. I think, um, I think what it is, it's it's a question of longevity. It's like a, you know, it's that old thing, like a, a first novel. You know, they usually give the cat a break, you know, and everybody kind of pats him on the back. And then the second one, they really chop him up. And uh, then if he does a few more, you know, and shows he has staying power, then, uh, you know, they say, well, welcome back to the fold. The human family embraces you. And I think it'd be the same way with us. We just have to hold out for a little while. And everyone one day will realize, wow, they, they're just like old friends. They've been around uh, for years now. And, you know, they're part of our national psyche. I guess we'll just, you know, accept them. You know, but now it's a little, you know, we're kind of in, a, in between. Some of the criticism has been about uh, a kind of music. You know, it seemed to have been, I don't know, rougher or maybe more revolutionary at the beginning, and then it seemed to have gotten more, I don't know, sweeter, you know, more top 40. Were you aware of that happening? Mm, I don't agree with that. I, th I just think the music keeps getting better and better. It, it gets more <clears throat> subtle and more sophisticated musically and lyrically. Besides, you know, um, if you keep saying the same old thing over and over, I mean, it's bound to get boring, right? Who wants to hear... Uh, Who wants to hear revolution 24 hours a day? No, I don't think that was it. I don't think it was just the, the lyrics or something. It, it had more to do with uh, sort of that overall sound in the, in the song, Hello, I Love You. That was one of the ones that I think you caught a lot of criticism for. You know, that song, <clears throat> I wrote that very early, about three years ago. Um... If you listen to the lyrics, you know, maybe maybe it's it's the arrangement. I, I like it. Hello, I love you. Why don't you tell me your name? Hello, I love you. Let me jump in your game. Uh -huh. um, she's walking down the street, blind to every eye she meets. Do you think you'll be the guy to make the queen of the angels sigh? Um... Forget the rest of it. Anyway, oh, do you hope to pluck this dusky jewel? I would, you know, I wouldn't say that's such a bad lyric. Maybe it was the arrangement then, but, you know, it had a, um, I don't know, I remember when I first heard it, and then at the end, end of the song, the DJ said, that was the doors. I said, What? No, it just, it didn't sound the same, or even like it. It wasn't just that I wanted to hear more of the same, it, uh, there was almost no connection. Yep, we're just full of surprises, Howard. <laughs> Can I have some more coffee, Kathy? You make the best coffee. <laughs> what kind of music do you listen to yourself? Well, uh, the only time I listen to music is um, in on car radios when I'm driving around.
you know, top 40 stuff. I don't listen to music that much. Uh, every now and then I'll catch up an act in public somewhere. I saw, uh, when I was in Vegas, I saw Peggy Lee. And, um, oh, what was that other band? Uh, I forget. They were... You know, I'll, I'll go to clubs every now and then, but I don't, I don't listen to music that much. I'm not what you call a, a music buff. Do you read a lot? No, I don't read very much either. I used to, and then I... Uh, life, <clears throat> life got so interesting that I didn't need to anymore. Hmm. Do you write a lot? Nope, I don't. I don't do much of anything, really. But I will, don't worry. I'll get back in the saddle, you know. I've just been kind of lazy lately. It's um, period, it's cycles of uh, non-productiveness and then intense periods of creativity. So right now I'm just uh, soaking it all in. Hmm. Doing what, though? You know, when you say you just live, where, like what? Oh, I, I did do one thing. I, I just completed a uh, short feature movie, 35 millimeter in color, called Highway, H-W-Y, with a few friends of mine. And um, we got the first answer print day before yesterday, and it should be re should be ready next week. I think it's quite good too. It's about sixty minutes long. What's it about? Uh, essentially, there's no plot, no story in the traditional sense. A a person that played by me comes down out of the mountains and hitchhikes his way through the desert into a modern city which happened to be LA and that's where it ends it's a very beautiful film hmm. you were just in it or you what else did you do with it anything there were four guys that made it, me and three other guys, and we all just kind of made it together. Uh, it started out, uh, I had a, an idea for a film about a hitchhiker who becomes a mass murderer, you know, the kind of thing that happens every year or so. Kind of like the Zodiac character, you know, except, you know, in a stark weather and... and uh, Billy Cook, and I mean, it happens every couple of years. And uh, so we went out in the desert to start shooting it. While we were out there, the film took over and just went in its own direction and uh, became something a little different. The only thing that, you know, that was left from the original idea was the idea of a hitchhiker. Do you like appearing in films? The only reason I did it, to tell you the truth, is because I I couldn't think of anyone else to do it, you know, and it was just as easy for me to do it. Uh, I might do some films, I don't know. The Blue PLJ New that, York. I, I'm not that crazy about being an actor. I'd, I'd rather be a director or a writer, something like that. But, uh, you know, if I had a chance, I'd probably do a few films. Why not? Uh, Shakespeare was an actor when he first came to London, you know. Are you going to be writing films, though? you have anything in the works? Mm, yeah, probably. The, if I do anything in films, it will probably be this uh, script called St. Nicholas that Michael McClure and I wrote based on his novel The Adept, which hasn't been published yet. Uh, it's a contemporary story about... Uh, a couple of dope dealers that 
should go to the desert to make a score. And uh, if I if I do anything, that'll probably be the first project. Are you going to appear in it also? Mm-hmm. Probably. Sort of sounds like the beginning of Easy Rider. Yeah, I know, but uh, there's nothing I can do about it. This this story was written before Easy Rider was made, you know, and it's just superficial similarities. It's I, I know people are gonna, you know, call attention to that, you know, but uh, I don't know what to do about it. You know, it's 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 very similar to Easy Rider. You know, in its superficial aspects. Do you know? I read in uh, in uh, Daily Variety yesterday. You know, Easy Rider was made for about three hundred and eighty-five thousand dollars, and the uh, the estimated gross. So far, it's fifty to sixty million dollars. He said, in a religious hush tone, fifty to sixty million dollars. That's quite a profit margin, my dear. <laughs>